Greetings. This is Bud Brownsville. And I'm here to talk to you about one block at a time. One Block at a Time is an organization that helps communities form block associations or strengthen existing block associations. When one thinks of block association, block associations, a lot of time we just think about block party. We're going to help change that small way of thinking. We want to think big with one block at a time. And in thinking big, one block at a time or block associations is not just from corner to corner anymore. If you're on Spring Street between Hook and Crook, <laughs> Spring Street Block Association is Spring Street. On your block, you may be the only one that's really willing to get involved and do anything. But on the next block, you have two people that may want to get involved. And on the other block, you have three people that want to get involved. Six of you now have formed a block association that takes care of Spring Street. We help with that. We help bring that concept, we help bring the structure, the, the rules and regulations. We bring what you need to succeed as a block association, as a community. We like to say common unity. Common unity. Community. It's what everyone has in common and they unified around that uniqueness, that commonality. One block at a time not only helps strengthen existing block associations and or help block associations form. We are a movement, community-based grassroots. You may not hear a lot of us publicly. But when you go to a block association meeting, you're going to hear about one block at a time. It's a grassroots effort. It's not going to be broadcast. I mean, we're going to do as much advertising as we possibly can. And I thank you for watching this. However, a lot of what we do is behind the scenes. We don't want the notoriety. We don't want to be the next big thing. We're big now. A lot of people just don't know about us and that's okay. As long as we're strengthening the community and we're making an impact. There are other communities or other organizations in the community that are doing great work. We support you. We support those organizations. They support us. When we go into a community that needs a particular form of help, we don't recreate the will. We go seek out the will that's already rolling properly and we bring them into the community to help with that effort. We're dot connectors, one block at a time. What are some of the services that One Block at a Time offers other than strengthening existing block associations or helping block associations form? We assist, we assist with block voting. What is block voting? Block voting is when the council person is running for office, when the mayor is running for office or in office, when the police chief or your leaders are looking to get into office. They rely on their constituents or people that think like they think or they look upon us to find out what we need to help service us. And if we are a organized 
group, an organized community, they want to come talk to us. Technically, they're forced to come talk to us because we're their voting block. We're either going to vote you in or we're going to vote you out. A lot of us don't know our strength, but we're going to help teach that. Every meeting your block association has, there should be someone from the community or a elected official in your meetings or representative of in your meetings. If you're meeting amongst yourselves and you don't have any of those uh, politicians or representatives of someone's office, they're helping you out, listening to your needs, you're more or less just gathering together, which is good also. You want to gather without them and then bring your demands or bring your requirements to them or have them come to you. However, we're going to change the game. Because it is a game, and that's another comment, uh, another subject for another time. But we teach what voting blocks or the power of voting blocks. There's a reason why you don't see Asians in central booking or in jails. There's a reason why you don't see Jews in jails or central booking. It's our turn. We need to get more organized and we need to utilize the power that we have that we don't realize we have. Voting blocks. Community gardens. Community gardens are in the vision of one block at a time. Is not that piece of land in between two buildings, that empty lot that they transform. That's nice. Community gardens from one block at a time's perspective is your house in your lawn, not growing grass, but growing something that's edible, herbs, spices, vegetables, fruits, your backyard as well. We need to begin taking care of ourselves, providing for ourselves. If I'm growing cucumbers in my yard, whether it's a front yard or backyard, and my neighbor's growing tomatoes, and across the street they're growing lettuce, that's a salad. <laughs> that community garden and that vacant lot is great, don't get me wrong. But if you were taking care of your own property, You'd pay more attention, you'd be more into it, and not everybody's farmers, not everybody's growers. You know, we'll have some people on the block that love to do it, and they'll utilize your land. There's organizations that do that. They come onto your property and take care of your property, growing stuff for you. They'll get a portion of it, but it's time for a change. Grass is great, concrete is nice. We need to grow our own food. Community gardens. We'll, we'll, we'll go in more in, in, later on in the conversation. Community patrols. There was an incident not too long ago where a officer was called to a community because a neighbor put his hands on a neighbor's son. The parent that called the police ended up getting arrested. If we were patrolling our own communities, we wouldn't need to call outsiders in for pretty much anything as long as we covered the bases. We had our own fire trucks, we don't need a fire department. That's a little bit extreme, but we can get there. There's volunteer fire, 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 volunteer fire departments servicing communities. Why can't we do it ourselves? Big ups to the the Brownsville I'm sorry, the Best Eye Fire um the Best Eye Volunteer Fire Department. Been doing that for years. That needs to be spread out to more communities. 
we need to do for ourselves. But back on community policing, if we are the eyes and the ears of our block, we know what's going on in our block and we can get involved and make sure these things don't happen. The drugs, the what you name it, there's nothing we couldn't do to stop what's going on in our blocks once we get involved. One block at a time, we're going to help with that. And we're going to do it one block at a time. It's not going to take forever. Because while we're on your block today, we're on another block somewhere else at the same time. We're not pooling all our resources on one block at a time. We're working simultaneously. So this is big. It's only going to get bigger. Um, community banking and community credit unions. We don't need Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America when we have ourselves. It's our deposits that's going into these institutions and they're not giving us nothing. We can form our own credit unions, our own organizations, our own banks, and bank amongst ourselves. Give ourselves loans. Help beautify our own, our own property in our community. One block at a time brings these techniques, brings this information to block associate meetings, to group gatherings, and educates the community on what we can do, what we haven't been doing, what we should be doing, that more than likely is going on in other communities. The time of discussing block associations and maybe a, a light being out on a light pole and on our block those days are over. Well, let me rephrase. We still gonna do that. <laughs> We're still gonna assist with those matters, but there is much more that needs to be done in our block associations, on our blocks, in our community. And one block at a time is gonna assist with that. Uh, conflict resolution workshops. We do not have anything near like that in our communities. Conflict resolution workshops learning to deal with one another, problem solving, working out our issues. If there's a shooting in the suburbs, in the vicinity of a school or in a school, grief counselors are deployed immediately in our neighborhoods where we hear the shootings and killings all the time, all day long. We don't get such resources. I need not go into why. But we're going to change that. We need conf We need to know how to deal with one another, how to resolve our conflicts. So conflict resolution is some of the things that we would bring to the community, the common unity, community, common unity, community. That's what we're bringing one block at a time. Emergency communications, emergency preparations, uh, a cell phone tower goes out how does your cell phone now go from point A to point B it doesn't we all need emergency communications it's a scanner police scanner you can listen to NYPD or your local police department EMS um, there's other organizations that I won't mention right now that you can listen to as well. It's legal. It's legal. In some states, you can't drive with this scanner in your car. Some states, um, you can't walk with this in the street. Well, let me put it this way. Like in New Jersey, as long as you're not committing a crime with this on you, this is legal. In New York, you cannot drive around in your car with your scanner on whether you're committing a crime or not but we can go into the, the, the rigmaroles emergency communication how do you get in touch with your family members in an emergency when the cell phone towers go down I could talk to somebody in Paris in Africa with a maybe a longer antenna with this device. It hits a repeater and the repeater sends it to another repeater to someone's handheld device, handheld radio, 
somewhere else. You need a license, a ham license to operate this in a non-emergency. We'll discuss that another time as well. But in an emergency, this is your emergency communications when your cell phone don't work. We bring this information to you. We discuss the the the, the what ifs. What should you be gathering up, saving up, storing up now in the event of an emergency? Other communities are too, uh, having these conversations. We're not having these conversations. We're talking about loving hip hop and other useless things. We need to start having these conversations of what we need to do, how we need to do it, and how we're going to do it together. We're all we got. When Hurricane Katrina went through St. Louis, what if we all had blow up boats? What if they had blow up boats? They could have saved themselves. We got uh, expensive sneakers on our feet, but we don't have emergency equipment at our disposal. We need to change this, and we're going to do this one block at a time. Group shopping. If we as a community went to these warehouse stores and shopped as a group, each family brought $200 maybe, and not even that much, $200, and we shopped as a, a group, we'd have much more to divide between each other and we've spent less than if you went by yourself. You go to Costco's, you go to um, Walmart, BJ's, and you can spend $400 easily and you look at your cart like, what did I get? But now we shopped as a group at these warehouse stores, at these um, um, wholesale places. We can do much better, and we need to. These are some of the things that we'll be discussing in block associations and communities through the name of one block at a time. Job preparation, teaching you how to prepare your resumes and cover letters. A cover letter must be attached to a resume. A cover letter must be attached to a resume. And most people don't know what a cover letter is. You know, um, letters of reference and things of this nature. We teach these things. We, we bring this information to the block associations. Um, loss prevention. Uh, what you should do to make sure that your home is safe when you b arrive back to it. We can help you purchase and install security cameras. Make sure your locks are working well. These are services that we provide to the community free of charge because we have community members that are in these fields. We have lawyers, we have doctors, we have dentists, all of which are willing to barter or sometimes provide for free their services through one block at a time. You need to give us a call. You need to bring us into your meetings and let us let you let us give you an idea of what we can do, what we can help you do. And we're not a babysitting service. We assist you. We'll come into your community and we may be there for a month. We may be there for three days, four days, depending on your need. And once you get on your feet and you're self-sufficient, we move into another community. Now, we're, uh, once, once again, we're not pooling all of our resources into that one block for months. No, we're working on several blocks same time doing it one block at a time strengthening the community one block at a time parenting classes Lamaze classes um, child you know birthing classes homeschool these are services these are opportunities that we can bring to your community bring to your block association set these things up we can help you with this team building workshops how do we know how to work with one another until we actually work with one another? Team building workshops goes along with the conflict resolution. We need solutions on how to work with one another and stop being so angry at one another. One block at a time. Zoning rights. 
in certain uh, neighborhoods in the country, you can't collect rainwater. Certain areas you can't add an addition into your house because of the zoning rights. They, the, the town will not allow you to do certain things. Well, we make up the town. We should be making up these rules. Who are we putting into office that's making these decisions? Why are these decisions not being made in our best interest? Because we're not being involved. But we're going to change that one block at a time. Give us a call. Invite us to your meeting, to your community, and let us help you strengthen your community one block at a time. My name is Bud Brownsville, and thank you for listening.